Hello and welcome to Nikolai's Genetics Lessons and today's problem is a company pedigree is for a trait with 100% penetrance, the trait is not necessary and common in the population, but individual 1-1 one, one is homozygous normal. And here is the three questions. If you think that this is a very simple problem, it is not so. Please watch the video and you will find that it's not as straightforward as you may think. Let's suggest that this is autosomal dominant genetic disorder. So genotype of this male is going to be capital A small a. Genotype of this female is going to be small a small a and her phenotype is normal. In order for this male here to be affected, he have to inherit dominant allele. And we see that he cannot get this dominant allele from none of his parents. His mother have to inherit from her father in her own turn. But we see that her phenotype is normal, so that means that she has two recessive alleles and her phenotype thus normal. So this is not autosomal dominant genetic disorder. Now let's suggest that this is X-linked dominant genetic disorder and genotype of this male is going to be defective X chromosome and normal Y chromosome and two normal X chromosomes here. And in this case, uh, this female here is going to inherit defective X chromosome from the father side. She cannot inherit Y chromosome, of course, or she is not going to be female. And from mother side, she's going to inherit normal X chromosome. And she would be affected with this genetic disorder because we suggest that this is dominant x link genetic disorder. But we see that her phenotype is normal. So this is not x link dominant genetic disorder. Now let's suggest that this is x link recessive genetic disorder. So genotype of this female is going to be two normal X chromosomes and defective X chromosome, normal Y chromosome for this male. And this female here is going to inherit normal X chromosome from the mother side defective X chromosome from the father side. But her phenotype is going to be normal because this is x link recessive genetic disorder and she has one normal allele, which is dominant. So she is heterozygous, but phenotype is normal. But as for her son here, we see that her son got from the mother defective X chromosome. He can get with the normal chromosome or defective X chromosome. And from the father side, who is going to be phenotypically normal, he got Y allele. So this explains that uh, this male is affected with this genetic disorder and we see that this genetic disorder skipped one generation. Now let's think about this male here. So he got Y chromosome from his father side. So Y chromosome from the father side and from the mother side, he only can get normal X chromosome. And as for female here, she got two defective X chromosomes in order to be affected with this genetic disorder. And actually this is very rare happens with re x link recessive genetic disorders, uh, much high chances that male would be affected with x link recessive genetic disorder, just simple mass. For example, if occurrence of this recessive uh, allele on the X chromosome would be 1 out of 100, then 1 out of 100 males would be affected with this genetic disorder. If occurrence of this defective X chromosome would be one out of uh, hundred in a gene pool. But for female to have this genetic disorder, she has to inherit two defective X chromosomes. What does it mean? This means that calculations in her case is going to be one hundreds multiplied by one hundreds. One hundreds uh, probability that she is going to get defective X chromosome from mother side and 100 is the probability that she's going to get defective X chromosome from her father side. 
So we expect that females would have this genetic disorder with a frequency 1 out of 10,000. Compare with males whose predicted frequency of this genetic disorder in a population going to be 1 out of 100 would, uh, of the males would be affected. And females would be affected with the same genetic disorder with a frequency 1 out of 10,000. And also, if you would take a look what's going to happen in this family, uh, all males are going to get Y chromosome inherit from the father side, and from the mother side they would inherit X chromosome. But both X chromosomes are defective, so they are going to get defective X chromosome. And in this case, they are going to be affected with this genetic disorder, because males are hemizygous, and even if they have recessive genetic disorder on the X chromosome, they don't have another normal X chromosome with normal allele, and this recessive genetic disorder so would manifest itself as dominant genetic disorder. So we have to reject this hypothesis that this is X-link recessive genetic disorder. Now let's think that this is autosomal recessive genetic disorder, then genotype of this male have to be small a, small a, and genotype of this female is going to be capital A, capital A. All children of this couple are going to be heterozygous, because from the mother side they only can inherit dominant allele, and from the father side they can inherit only recessive allele. So this female is going to be heterozygous, this male is going to be heterozygous, this female heterozygous, and this male is going to be heterozygous. And we also have to suggest that this female is homozygous recessive, and we suggest that this um, male have to be heterozygous in order for this couple to have affected child. And at the same time for this couple to be phenotypically normal. Take a look. Uh, if we build simple Punnett square, so genotype of one parent, genotype of the other parent, and if we build simple Punnett square, uh, the probabilities are going to be as follows. One quarter probability that couple who is going to be both heterozygous would have a child who is going to be affected and going to be homozygous recessive genotype small a small a and probability is one quarter. And by the way, we now can answer question B. What is the probability that the child of the brother sister mating between 2, 3 and 2, 4, 2, second generation 3 and 4, uh, that uh, will show the trait phenotypically. And uh, to show the trait phenotypically, the child have to be homozygous recessive and the answer is going to be one quarter for heterozygous parents. Now let's answer the last question. What is the probability that a child of the first cousin marriage 32 and 33 will carry the gene of the trait? And important here is will carry, not would be affected but would carry uh, recessive allele. Uh, it said here gene, but the correct would be allele. In order for this child to be a carrier or to be heterozygous, he have to have one dominant allele and one recessive allele. And this recessive allele he can get from mother side or father side. So let's calculate what is the probability that mother have this uh, recessive allele. Both parents are heterozygous and her phenotype is normal. That means that she belongs to this group. And probability for her to be heterozygous would be 2 out of 3. So 2 out of 3. Let's put this probability for her uh, to be heterozygous here. What is the probability that this male here is going to be a carrier or would be heterozygous so he would would be able to give this recessive allele to his progeny. 
and take a look. Mother is homozygous recessive. So from mother's side, he can get only uh, recessive allele. From the father's side, this male can get with the dominant allele or recessive allele. If he would get recessive allele from the father's side, he is going to be affected with this genetic disorder. So we know that he got dominant allele from his father. And we know genotype for sure that this male here is heterozygous. And we know this uh, for 100% we're sure about this. Or we also can say 1 over 1, which is also 100%. Again, one more time, because we know that he is not affected, that means that he got dominant allele and he only can get it from the father side. And the other allele, which he is going to get from the mother side, only can be recessive allele. So we know for sure that he is heterozygous. And being heterozygous, what is the probability that he is going to give recessive allele to his progeny? Sex is not important here, and two variants, whether it's going to be dominant allele or recessive. So one half probability that uh, he would give recessive allele. What about mother? She also have one half probability that she's going to give recessive allele, and one half that she's going to give dominant allele. So for a mother, our calculations would be as follows. So here's a mother to thirds multiplied by one half. So probability that she's going to give recessive allele to her progeny is going to be two over six. And as for the male probability uh, for the father, probability to give uh, recessive allele is going to be one half. So we just put one half here. And now the last step would be to add these two probabilities. So we have to add, by the way, two over six, we can reduce, and this is going to be one over three. Now let's add these probabilities, one third plus one half. And we have to multiply by two here and by three here. So what we are going to get, two and three, 2 plus 3 is going to be 5, and 6 here, 5, 6. This is going to be a probability that the child here are going to be a carrier. So going to be capital A, small a. Again, two variants. He can get this recessive allele from mother side or from the father side. So we have to add these two probabilities. But when we have to multiply probabilities, if the question would be, what is the probability that this child is going to be homozygous recessive or would be affected with this genetic disorder, then we have to multiply these two probabilities that he is going to get recessive allele from the mother side and from the father side. But we are asked about probability of um, child being carrier, so we have to add probability. This is uh, very important. It's not very usual to ask such question. That's why I said uh, this is going to be an interesting and probably not as straightforward as you probably get used to. Now let me review our question. So we have found an answer to the first question that this is autosomal recessive genetic disorder. To the second question, our answer is going to be that couple here would have a probability to have affected child, which which is going to be one quarter, according to this Punnett square when two parents are heterozygous. And to the third question, our answer probability that a child is going to be heterozygous is going to be five over six. Again, uh, here we have to add probabilities and not multiply them because we are looking for probability for the child to have one recessive allele. One more hint, if uh, the question would be what is the probability that one allele would be recessive and 
the other allele would be recessive. So if we connect two probabilities with the word and, then we have to multiply probabilities. But if the question is, what is the probability that uh, this child would inherit recessive allele from the mother side or from the father side, then we have to add probability. So if we connect two probabilities with the word or, we have to add them. If we connect them with the word and, we have to multiply them. And this is all for today. Thank you for your attention. Please subscribe for my new videos that I post almost every day. And see you in the next video. Goodbye.